All right, so we're going to celebrate the paper kingdom. We're going to celebrate the paper kingdom. All right. Celebrate the paper kingdom. So let's have Helena introduce herself. My name is Helena Kuri. I'm a writer based in Los Angeles. Can you tell us about the book? The Paper Kingdom is special to me because it's based on my childhood. When I was a kid, my parents, uh, this was when I was about three or four years old before I started going to school, my parents worked as night janitors for a while. So at night, they would go to work and often they couldn't secure childcare, whether they couldn't afford it or nobody was available. And so I would go to work with them. And what's really cool is that instead of the experience being dreary and sad, it was actually often fun because they would tell funny stories and um, make it entertaining for me. So do you guys know that because of, of the virus that's going on right now, are you guys in school? No. Are, are you going to daycare? Um, no. Because we're all kind of staying at home now, people are having to work with their kids, just like the Paper Kingdom story. So maybe this would be a good story for for parents to share with kids, because a lot of people now are experiencing what it's like to work with their kids. <laughs> Poor tiny bunny. He's got a little bit of gas, huh? No, he did he. He burped. He burped. Okay. And, and it can be hard, right? It can be hard to work with your kids. What did you do for fun when you were a little kid? You know, we didn't have a bunch of material possessions because, you know, funds were limited. I was forced to use my imagination a lot. So maybe I had a handful of toys, but I just remember um, creating stories left and right and just conjuring little scenarios in my head because that's that's what I did that's what you had to do I think the kids living in my apartment complex we all did that we would be in the courtyard and we we would just create fantasy lands and it was it was a ton of fun what do, what do you remember out of the story that there really was a dragon in the star that their imagination really helped make a situation that wasn't so fun fun right and all of a sudden there were dragons in the stall yeah let's ask her what she hopes kids get out of the story well several things actually first and foremost just the power of imagination and to just exercise your imagination muscles whenever you're bored or tired or you have nothing to do because the imagination is such a powerful tool and then secondly just to be aware of the spaces we occupy. And like I said, I wanted to kind of highlight this segment of society, the invisible people who work when the rest of us are at, at home, having dinner, getting ready for bed. There's still people working, working very, very hard out there. That's interesting, right? Now think about the places that you've been. Think about like your school. Or Disneyland. Or yes, even like Disneyland. Just think about those places and how, is your school clean? Yes. So do you think there's somebody that comes and helps clean everything up and make sure the bathrooms are clean? I mean, they clean well school, but it, but a lot of times I believe on the weekends they come to clean before the special events. Yeah. And they clean during the school days too. And those people do a very important no, job, don't no. they? Uh -huh. When we go into those public spaces, we should be nice and make sure we clean up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that. I know that. I know that. <laughs> what do you want to be when you grow up? A veterinarian. A veterinarian. So what do you want to be? A fireman, 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 fireman. <laughs> okay. You want to be a fireman? We should, should we ask her what she wanted to be when she was a little kid? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I always wanted to be a writer. It was, it was probably my biggest dream. Um, but at the same time, growing up in a working class family, knowing that your parents toil day and night, I knew I could not be a writer full time, at least not at the get go, because a writer's income is precarious. You don't know when you're going to get your next paycheck. And I knew that I had to have a good steady paycheck in order to help out my family. Um, and so I went to law school after college. I went to college at Yale and then I went to law school at Berkeley and then I became a corporate lawyer and I knew that I had to help my parents and I actually did. I helped them with their mortgage for a while. I gave them, you know, 
some of the finer things in life that they weren't able to afford on their own, like vacations. I sent them on several international vacations and I, I made it a yearly, uh, a yearly gift to them that I've been carrying on for like over a decade now. And it was really important for me to, to give back to them because I knew how hard they worked for, for me and our family. Okay. Did you hear that part? Yeah. What did she, what did she do? She put it on a vacation. She sent her parents on vacation. So let's think. Let's think what happens when you are a veterinarian and you are a fireman. Are you going to send your daddy and mommy on vacations? Yeah. I'm going to send you on 100 vacations. You, then, At a time. At a time? Yeah, me too. No, Infinity. Infinity? Infinity beyond. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm holding you guys to that. See you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>